The Trans-Pacific Partnership is a centerpiece of the Obama administration's trade strategy, and it's announced intention to pivot toward the Pacific. Twelve nations are in the process of seeking ratification of an agreement that presents both opportunities and challenges. U.S. Trade Representative Michael Froman recently discussed the deal with Wilson Center President Jane Harmon. Their discussion provides the focus for this edition of Rewind. What can I say? It's a pleasure uh, right after the new year to welcome back Ambassador Michael Froman, the United States Trade Representative. Uh, Mike was here just over a year ago making the case for the strategic importance of trade. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, a.k.a. TPP, wasn't on paper yet. And today it's a 5,000-page agreement that lays down rules of the road for more than a quarter of the world. From Latin America to the Asia-Pacific on issues from workers' rights to digital commerce, TPP, in my personal view, is the 21st century trade deal. But now the challenge is to sell it. And the fight in the U.S. Congress for the moment is uphill. As Jane alluded to, the full text of the agreement has been out now for more than two months. And day after day, as Americans delve into its details, the momentum is building for its approval. Uh, day after day, fresh facts are displacing stale fears. Facts like the fact that 95% of the world's customers live outside our borders. The TPP is strategic in the broader sense of the word. TPP is the economic centerpiece of our rebalancing to Asia and a concrete manifestation of America's ability to show global leadership. So there's an urgency here that's undeniable. The world isn't simply watching to see whether the U.S. will lead on trade. It's moving forward without us. And the question is whether the U.S. will move forward as well or be left on the sidelines. Delay is costly, both in economic terms and in terms of U.S. global leadership. Why wait? and allow thousands of foreign taxes on American exports to persist? Why wait on supporting additional high-paying middle-class jobs here in the United States? Why wait and allow other countries like China to write the rules of the road? You know, the namesake of this institution once said, the world has a habit of leaving those behind who won't go with it. Through TPP, we can do more than go along with the world. We can lead it. The scare is, or the fear is, that, this is a, that trade is a net job loser. That if we trade with all these folks, all these countries in Asia, uh, American jobs will, you know, the giant sucking sound, to quote Ross Perot in another era, uh, will occur and these jobs will be lost. Look, we're already an open economy. Uh, our average applied tariff is 1.4%. We don't use regulations as a disguised barrier to trade. As we grow, we do take imports from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So if through this trade agreement, we can disproportionately reduce barriers to other markets, bring down, bring down tariffs that are much higher in, China, in Japan, Vietnam, Malaysia, et cetera, so that we can get access to those markets, raise standards in those countries so that we have a more level playing field on which we can compete, we're gonna increase our exports. Every billion dollars of exports supports five to 7,000 jobs in the US. Those jobs pay 18% more on average the non-export related jobs. So by opening markets, leveling the playing field, we're helping to support more good paying jobs here in the United States, which is exactly what this is all about. Uh, so China's a major trading partner of ours. China, China's a major trading partner probably of everyone who will be part of TPP. Absolutely. Um, so I, I'm assuming this is not a zero sum game here, that if TPP passes, uh, China wins too. You know, we're working with China, and they, they have followed TPP very, very closely uh, because they know it will have an effect uh, on them, an effect on the region when you raise standards uh, in the region around them. Uh, we're working with them bilaterally to address a whole array of outstanding issues, whether it's uh, intellectual property rights protection or forced technology uh, transfer, local content requirements, uh, et cetera. And uh, we have uh, channeled their interest into negotiating a bilateral investment treaty. Mm -hmm which can have a pretty significant impact, a very significant impact, on the way they manage their economy and help liberalize and help reform uh, their, their economy, which is in all of our interests. So we focus, we're having a very uh, a robust discussion with them and quite constructive about what it means to have a high standard bilateral investment treaty, what kind of reforms they will have to undertake, and that's a good step forward in our bilateral relationship. Um, 
Even though the agreement is huge, I'm not sure everybody realizes that most trade agreements are incremental and that they uh, are small improvements one after another, and that the TPP is really an exercise in U.S. leadership to take some giant leaps in some new areas. You've talked about state-owned enterprises. We talked about uh, data protection for biologics and currency controls. What do you say to those folks who are saying, now, we wanted those new things, but we didn't get everything we wanted? We're not satisfied with how giant your giant leap was. Well, how do you respond to those criticisms? No agreement is going to satisfy everybody 100% of the time on 100% of the issues. But I think on balance, when we look, whether it's the complete elimination of manufacturing tariffs in these countries, <laughs> the areas, the new areas that you mentioned, whether it's currency, uh, digital economy, state-owned enterprises, the first ever disciplines uh, in this area uh, in, in the context of a, of a trade agreement. Uh, these are all significant steps forward. Um, uh, does this mean it's, that there isn't more that, that, uh, that, that people wanted in each of the areas? Sure, but I think on balance, we have to both compare this agreement to the status quo and this agreement to the alternative. You know, the world isn't gonna, it's not the status quo or, the T, or TPP that is the, is the real choice. It's TPP or what the world is going to look like without TPP going forward. For more information, visit wilsoncenter.org. Click the Events tab and search under Past Events for more video on trade and a range of other global issues.